and it's not going to be funded. Uh, you know, the last time we had a Republican-controlled uh, uh, governor's office, assembly, and senate before 2014, 89 years. So I, I, I don't, I wouldn't hold our breath on getting it done. So what's the solution? <laughs> Education is funded two ways. I believe 4,200, these numbers may not be completely accurate, but close enough. About 5,200 comes from the state money here, 4,200 from the federal money. Well, why don't we just reverse it? And instead of using the state money to fund the education savings account, if the federal money that comes back to the states here could be used in block grants and you allow it to be allocated to the different families to use for education, like their education savings account, it's a way to get around what we're never going to get done here again in Nevada. Yes, sir. Oh, wait, wait a second. I, I, I'm sorry. I hope I don't take up too much time on this, but I want to say, do you know what the real problem with education is? Administration. No. How do you teach kids when, how do you teach kids in a classroom when they speak multiple languages? No, no, only speak, they all speak one language but multiple languages. I had three kids of mine, when the recession hit, I had to pull my kids out of a private school, put them in a public school. They were all getting straight A's, they never had to study. I'm thinking to myself, God, this is amazing. You know, I got the brightest kids ever. And, and I was seriously down in that, but, um, or, 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 or something's wrong with the school. So anyways, we pulled them out when we started, we, we, we saved our, our, our business and, and got in the pri put it back in the private school. And two of, the, uh, of them that we put in, one was one grade behind the math and two in English and the other was the opposite. So I said to them, how could you get such great grades? What do they do in the public schools? All three of them. Now three of them are telling me separately. There's approximately 25 kids in the class. Of that 25, five don't speak English. I said, how does the teacher teach them? And he, he, he said, the teacher finds a bilingual student. So the teacher will give the, the lesson in English. The bilingual student will then translate it to the Spanish speaking students, who then may have a question that in Spanish says that to the bilingual student, then goes back in English to the teacher. Now imagine all these uh, six, seven, eight, nine-year-olds that are sitting here twiddling the thumbs while this is going back and forth. You wonder, first of all, why they're not learning anything, and second of all, why they don't have anything to study when they go home. That's the problem. You know, look, if I was, uh, uh, and my grandmother came to America, she couldn't speak English. If I was in her position, I had kids, I would demand that they learn English immediately so they could acclimate themselves to our society and be better at it. I think that's the answer. To yeah, it has to be done. To yes. Uh, you, you mentioned about how long it took for us to get the Republicans back in the state legislature, the governorship. How is you running for the Senate going to help us get the legislature back and keep the governorship? Because I'm going to help bring the Trump people, the people that like what's going on with the, the, the White House, and those policies out to vote. Dean Heller will not get the Trump people to come out and vote, at least not as many as he needs. We saw that with Joe Heck. Well, you're going to vote for you, but how are we going to get them no, to no, vote they, for the legislature? Yeah, but they, they vote down. Because it's, it's a down ticket. Yeah, they vote down ticket. Just, just like, a, look, we had some good candidates, uh, myself included, that lost this last election. So I want to pat myself on the back a little Yay. bit. Uh, we lost because the top of the ticket underperformed because people were discouraged to come out and vote for President Donald Trump in the, in the election, so it goes down ticket. Every single one of us lost. So if we do well, myself can bring people to the polls, Adam or Dan brings people to the polls in the governor's race, it helps everybody in the down ticket. But to be quite honest with you, there are assembly races that we have no business winning because the numbers are just too ridiculous. We won in 2014. Do you guys understand why we won in 2014? Because a lot of people don't understand. You know why we won in 2014? Stay home. Democrats stay home, why do they stay home? Right. I mean, there's, there's off your elections all the time. Uh, let me tell you what. What's that? No one was challenging Sandoval. Yeah. I told you, my man is smart right here. Yeah. <laughs> this is what happened. No president on the ballot. No Senate race on the ballot. The only main race on the ballot is, is, is Governor Sandoval. And who did Governor Sandoval run in the general election? Anybody remember? Well, that's because the guy who was nominated by the Democrat Party lost to none of the above in the primary. Right. <laughs> Imagine losing none of the above and then being the nominee. That's pretty hard to do. Wow. So to think that's going to happen again, it's almost impossible. Yes. What about voter fraud or ID regulations oh, yeah. in the state? 2006, I was a strong proponent of requiring people to show a photo ID and proof of citizenship when they registered, photo ID when they voted. Eighty-some percent of all Nevadans were in favor of it. The Democrats will not allow that to to go to a vote. That's the other thing that bothered me about the 2000 and I guess it would be 15 legislature. Sure. Why didn't they vote and pass a photo ID bill at that time when we had the chance to do so? Right. It really, really, 
Every year you hear Republicans talk about how they want it, and we had the chance to do it, and we didn't. This is the thing about uh, voter fraud. Is there are, is some voter fraud here. We've established that. I mean, my wife and uh, Victoria Seaman and some others, they've walked door to door on some of the people that, that registered late and found uh, two or three of them that were illegal. They forwarded it to Barbara Sagaski. She's found some others. The question is how much, and it's hard to tell because nobody ever does an investigation, thorough investigation, to find out a preemptive thorough investigation. What I hope to happen is I hope that when I win the primary, we'll get in the general election, I have a chance to sit down with President Trump and I say, listen, you need to get you guys out here. You need to monitor what's going on here, the AG's office, the FBI, and make sure everything's done in the up and up. It's the only thing you can do. I don't, I'm not, but don't don't misquote me and say I'm saying voter fraud caused anybody to lose. I don't know for sure. I'm just saying we don't know because there's never really been a preemptive investigation on it. It's always post, uh, after it happens and you find a couple of them, they say, oh, we found two, okay, let's move on. When you get to Washington, D.C., you'll be in one of the most exclusive clubs in the world. And that exclusive club has a leader that can't even find his way out of the closet. Oh, that's a wrong term. But anyway, he doesn't have a lot going on. And then all the people that are there follow the heads of the club. Uh, I think that what we need, our employees work for us. They don't work for the members of the club. And one of the things that the club has a great thing doing, most people don't even realize, is called the omnibus bill. That's when all the spending goes into one big thing, and 33% of that budget is just automatic. And if we didn't have that, we'd have a hell of a lot less need for taxes if we could just get them to do what constitutionally they're supposed to do. There's 12 groups that are there, finance, vets, et cetera. And so we need to get away from that. Okay. I, I, I'm all in favor, and I think you're absolutely right. One vote, uh, one issue, one vote, and so you know what you're voting on. You're not uh, putting these riders and attachments on that nobody would vote for if it wasn't on a bill that had to be passed. The second thing I think is very important is term limits. I've signed the term limit yes. pledge. I think the term, yes. right now, you know who, Right now in Nevada, the only people that are not on term limits are your congressmen and senators, anybody else is, and probably the ones that need it the most. Um, and with respect to the person in Washington, D.C. who's in charge of the Senate, I've come out and said I will not vote for him to be the majority leader of the states. But that's, that's a throwaway issue, Danny. That's like Heller what? saying that no pay, no budget, no pay. That's a whole lot you different. Mean that, no, that's a whole the lot club's different. not going to vote for that, and that's where you're going to get term, that's the only place you're going to get term limits is in the club. Oh, you're talking about, no, okay, we're on yeah. a different thing. Term limits has to be done constitutionally. It can't be done. It's not going to be done. Never get the it'll never get out of Okay, the so capital. what's your alternative? Huh? What's your alternative? Uh, hey, you can keep barking it got, for it. It got passed here. It got passed in many other states. And these people have got to hold their representatives responsible. And then they, they can have a convention. Put, who's and they going to put pass. the bill out? McConnell? No, no, no. It would have to be a constitutional amendment. You'd have to have a constitutional uh, convention and pa pass another amendment like they did before. But I, I want to get to McConnell. So, because to this is a big distinction between myself and Senator Heller. Is Mitch McConnell, I come out and said, I'm not going to support Mitch McConnell. Uh, there's a number of reasons, but let me tell you the big, well, thank you. I, I, uh, <laughs> Dean's 100% behind Mitch. You know why? Mitch McConnell came out and he said, I'm going to support every elected uh, uh, um, senator I have, irres irrespective of me, I'm going to support them. So he's telling you that even if you have a senator that doesn't support the president, doesn't support his America First policies, you're going to support him just because he's an elected official? You're going to protect your swamp? You're going to protect the people that are going to vote you back in office? To me, that's disgraceful. That's that. That's a that's a, 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 a bit, uh, repudiating your responsibility to do what's best for your country, and and, and I've come out against McConnell. Hell is fully supportive of him, and the reason he's fully supportive of him is because McConnell's <coughs> promised to put billions of dollars in his primary to try to beat me, but he tried that in Alabama. That didn't work. <laughs> yes. Well, you talked about having money come back from the Department of Education. I am so not interested in keeping these five counties in Washington D.C. the richest. When are we going to get rid of that stupid Department of Education with all this stuff done globally for us, and it's worked so well? And I think uh, keeping our money here and using it might be a little more beneficial than waiting for it to come back from the almighty Washington. Well, I mean, we, we can hope that uh, 
we uh, eliminate the Department of Education and give us money, but if we eliminate it, they're just going to spend it somewhere else. Uh, and we have, that's, we have needs to our education system that the federal government's providing. The problem I see in it is they, they do a, if you don't do what we tell you to do education-wise, you don't get your own money back. And right. that's the big problem. That's the common core. What I was proposing is we take back in proportion of what's paid and you give it to the education uh, um, counties, what is it, the Clark County school, the school districts, and allow them to decide, well, it can't be the public school system. You're gonna have to give it back to the states and let the states decide how to use it, and I would be in favor of using it to fund the education savings accounts. I know that didn't answer your question real well, but you're not gonna completely eliminate it. If you did, even if you did, you're not gonna get the money from it. They're gonna spend it in another department. Danny, you got a question? I have a zinger, I'm sorry. I'm gonna play okay. devil's advocate a little bit. Um, it's my understanding that senior senators get to choose, get to nominate. You want I'm me to, so you can't hear me? Wait a I'm so glad you asked the question. Senior senators get to nominate federal judges for their state. And it would be awful to have Catherine Cortez Masto be nominating my judges. Oh. <laughs> I'm, so glad here, that, here. I'm so glad that that was asked because when I was supposed to speak here last time, that was a big issue. The senior senators normally nominate who uh, they run a record. No, they don't nominate. They absolutely don't nominate. They recommend to the president who they feel would be a good district court or court of appeals judge. The president is the only person who decides who to nominate for the federal bench, and that nomination then goes to the full Senate. So Catherine Cortez can make a recommendation, and Donald Trump will ignore her, just like he ignores Schumer in New York, and uh, who's a lady in California that's a senior one? Would it be a father? Father, do you think he's actually, do you think Donald Trump's actually picking federal judges in California based upon Feinstein's recommendations or Schumer's? Or it's just as laughable to think that he would pick Catherine Cortez's. It's a non-issue. It's a complete non-issue. And I don't know where it all got started, maybe from some uh, s something around here, I don't know, or maybe from Heller's office. I can tell you it's a non-issue. And uh, if it was, then Harry Reid would have nominated every single person that was here during the Bush years. Uh -huh. And he didn't. Okay? Yes. My name is Lynn Chapman, and I'm with, uh, I'm State Vice President of Nevada Eagle Forum. Um, and I wanted to know where you stand, even though everything's been, rescind everything's been rescinded in our, our state, um, but where do you stand on an Article 5 uh, COS Constitutional Convention uh, budget? Uh, budget amendment, where do you stand on, on those? Well, I, I, you'd have to go through each one and tell me what you're referring well, to. Yeah, well, constitutional, constitutional convention. Uh, uh, for <laughs> what? Do you want a constitutional convention for one would be the term no, limits one we're ta part. talking about. Well, that's what I'm saying. Where do you stand? Do you want, a co do you want Congress to call a constitutional convention? Or are you against having a constitutional oh, I, convention? Are you worried? Because, because some people are worried if you do that, they're going to pass other constitutional amendments. Yeah. That would be highly effective to us. Yeah, because we have a lot of people out there that have a lot of things that they want to uh, do to our Constitution, and that's what we've got to be very careful about. So I was just You absolutely have to be very careful for it, but there are right. also some things that are very important, I think, to get passed. I think term limits is one of them. Um, we can, we can do that balanced budget, budget amendment would be very important. Um, I, I'll have I, to send you some information. No, I, 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 I actually, when, when this issue you're talking about was brought up when my wife was a state party chair, yes. and they were educating her on the risk of doing that, and so I understand what you're trying to say. And there are risks that uh, maybe some of those things would be passed that are, were not in favor, but you need a high, uh, was it two thirds of the uh, state legislatures and so forth? Yeah. Uh, and I don't think they're gonna get two thirds of, uh, of a many. Amendment. Yeah, that's for an amendment. If you're doing an amendment to the, the Constitution, Constitution, but I'm talking about uh, have opening up our Constitution to a convention like we had for the first uh, convention. That the no, only convention you have a we've ever had. Have that to allow amendments, to vote on amendments, and you'd have that's to have the two-thirds majority. That, yeah, but that's something different, but what we're talking about, a constitutional convention is not... All right, we can sit down, we'll talk some more after this, maybe yeah, educate me better than I, maybe I'm not understanding completely, yeah. okay? okay? Yes? I, I just, I'm looking at what's going on in our country with, with Trump, and the establishment on the left, and the establishment on the right, plus the media, will be after you, and like a foreign, uh, what's his last name? In Utah. Orrin Hatch. Orrin Hatch. He's the one that got to uh, 
Mr. Heller to vote in June before anything was really out for the Bushes. And then he got back to them to, Mar to go for Rob uh, Mario Rubio and so forth. So the establishment guys are gonna be on you because you're a new beginner and we know what's right for you. Can you, I mean, you're gonna have to really be tough and stand. Everybody you're saying that to is gonna tell you today they'll be tough and they won't be swayed. I can tell you I already did that. Uh, for that you don't know my past history, I needed to win that last election, okay? Anybody doubt that I was desperately needed to win that last election? <laughs> so I get a call, and I swear, I mean, I'm telling you, this is the honest to God, goodness truth. I get a call Friday night from my consultant, and, my, and he tells my campaign manager, Danny, this tape came out on Trump, you gotta get rid of him, you're gonna lose if you don't. I said, you're crazy, there's no, I said, I'll, I'll get rid of him as soon as I have, as soon as you tell me uh, they had enough Democrat senators to impeach uh, um, Clinton when he um, had his little uh, affair in, in the White House. So he hung up on me and got the rest of the people on my campaign on the phone, and they tried to pressure me, and I wouldn't do it. The next morning I get a call from the same campaign manager, Heller and Hardy are gonna have this press conference, you gotta join them. I said, good luck to them, tell them they just screwed their whole campaign up. Danny, and he pressured me, then I wouldn't do it. I got 12 calls from uh, uh, the, one of the top consultants in the state, who's a longtime friend of my mom's and dad's, not so much me. Uh, his name's Sig Rovich. He called me 12 times, I finally took his 12th call, and he said, Danny, you gotta get rid of uh, Trump. If you don't, you're gonna lose. He said, Trump's dropped 10 points already today. If you, tomorrow will be down 10 more. And I said, I'm not gonna do it. He's the one who said, think of your poor wife. You put her through these elections and lost. Your poor wife, you're gonna let her down. And I said, there's no way I'm doing this. It isn't right, I'm not gonna, and I stood by him. I was at, uh, I went and got breakfast, and I was there, and Ch Chuck Muth called me up. And he said, Danny, are you gonna uh, get rid of Trump? Are you gonna um, distance yourself from Trump? I said, there's no way I'm gonna do that. I said, my, my dad would roll over his grave if I was a coward and did something like that. And he said, good, because everybody else has done so. So listen, if I'm gonna stand up and hand, uh, to the pressure of that, don't you think I stand up to what they tell me to do when I'm in office once I'm already there? They can't yeah. do anything to me? Yeah. By 1% in the closest race in Nevada, everybody lost. Joe Heck lost, he was up five points. But could you have won if you had best of them? First of, first of all, principle, integrity. Okay, that's, that's a great, great statement, and, and, and I appreciate that, what you're saying right there. And that's what, that is what so many successful politicians do. And, and this is what I try to say at the beginning. You may disagree with me because you're right, because this is what they do. But if you go and, and, and run for office and you do what's politically expedient, what's best for you politically against the best interests of your country, it gets back to why would you be proud of your successes? I mean, you sold out your country. Nobody, who, nobody here in Nevada that was on the GOP site thought Hillary Clinton was gonna be a better president than Donald Trump. But everybody who repudiated him helped Hillary Clinton win Nevada. Now, That's right. would they, and let's say they all won. Let's say, you know, Joe Heck won, uh, everybody who, Crescent Hardy won. Could they be proud of themselves after that? I, I, I wouldn't be, okay? You know, again, maybe it's just a difference of opinion. I, I remember, I'm not gonna get it, I had another conversation with my wife after a loss I had, and she said, talking great about this one person, I said, God, you know, he just doesn't tell the truth. I said, people will like him, you'll see, you'll, I'll prove you're right, you'll see what happens. And she said to me, well, you know, are you a little bit upset that you lost and he won? You know, and I'm thinking to myself, you don't get it. I, listen, I've had That's a right. lot of great success. I've been blessed in my life. I'm financially secure. I've got a great wife, I've got great kids. I had the best parents you can have. I lose a race, that doesn't dictate to me if I'm a success in life or not. But you know what does? If I turn to a phony, the biggest thing my dad told me not to be, that would be the worst thing I could do. And, 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 I, and so, so first of all, could I want, because everybody else lost, who did repudiate Trump? No, I don't think I could have. But even if I could have, I would have rather lost. Integrity. It's about integrity. Courage and conviction. First of all, you, everybody, I mean, you have a certain amount of conviction, but do you have the courage to stand by those convictions? And that's what it all matters. And believe me, that's the question, who is about the swamp? Did you ask about, the, about changing? Mean, establishment. Establishment. It's, it's, it's if you sell out to the swamp, you don't have the courage to stand up for your convictions. And, 
And again, look, I think I'm going to win this race. I wouldn't have gotten into it if I didn't. But if I don't, it doesn't define me as a, uh, my life. But if I win and I do what I promise you I'm going to do, that defines me in my life. Quantify that in numbers. You're up six points, and 38% of registered Republicans don't want Helen. Look, look, look. There, the, the polls can be all over the place. There's been two independent polls taken. One had me up eight, one had me up six. Heller had some phony poll he put out that uh, you know, he's up 20, and that's ridiculous. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter at this point, except that it helps with fundraising. That's a national fundraising, the polls do. Besides that, they don't mean anything. It, what, what matters when you get towards the end of the race. It's gonna come down to this. In my opinion, this is what it's gonna come down to. It. Are you, D D D Dean Heller's already started and his third party groups are gonna continue and they're gonna make you believe, they're gonna try to get the public to believe he was a supporter of Donald Trump's in the last election and he supports his policies now and that he actually voted for the repeal of Obamacare and that he's not, he would not fund Planned Parenthood and uh, I don't think he's gonna get around the immigration thing because he's standing up by that. But he does enough money to people that don't follow politics closely, they may believe that. Now it's my responsibility to say, look at it. I was a strong supporter of Donald Trump and I got ridiculed and demonized for doing so. My opponent didn't. I believe that we should repeal Obamacare and here's the reason why. It isn't right for hardworking middle class Americans to pay $1,400 more a month. Look, at you, they're talking about a tax break in this bill of what, $1,000 or $1,200? Hell, we got a tax increase of $1,400 for Obamacare already. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. So that's, I got it. I got, I'm against Obamacare. I'm going to vote to repeal it. I don't believe people who come in our country illegally should get citizenship. And I believe the vast majority of Americans, I mean, no, GOP voters believe that. And I don't believe we should be using your taxpayer dollars to fund Planned Parenthood or any other organization that performs abortion. Now, you may or may not agree with abortion, but why are they using our taxpayer dollars? Those are things I believe in. I'm going to educate the voters on it. Dean Heller's on the record opposite. My biggest uh, obstacle is going to be having enough money to get the message out of, of what would actually happen. Now, there's two things you guys can help me with here. First of all, my great worker over here, Deputy Campaign Manager Morgan Schultz, wave, wave your hand, please. Hey, Morgan. He, uh, he's taken down a lot of your uh, email addresses. If you don't mind, uh, if you're willing to, please give us yours if you haven't. And when we send you our campaign stuff, forward it to your family and friends. It allows us to get our message out without having to pay the cost of advertising and the second thing is if anybody's willing to contribute we have a thing that we created called the 10 for TARC it's people that don't have a lot of money but want to help is you can go online at tarcnv.com you can contribute ten dollars a month to the end of the primary which is seven months from now so ten dollars a month will help you give me the ability to educate the rest of the voters in Nevada of the things that I've talked about here today uh, it's at tarcnv.com one more question yes I, I don't believe they should get any tax pay benefits if they were not in the country legally. Earned income tax credit for children aren't even in the country. Yeah. I, I, it's not right. And again, it's something that distinguishes. Well, I'm not going to say that. I, 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 I don't, I'm, I don't. I'm not a fan of that. Okay. And I won't go for that. Yes. Oh, one uh, point, yesterday we made some history in Alabama and uh, Judge Roy Moore uh, was defeated, as, as, at least the last I know of. <laughs> anyway, I think you know history is very instructive, either positively or negatively. And I think the, the, you know, my observation is Judge Roy Moore made the mistake of, of allowing all the flack to distract him from the values and principles, the main issues that he should have kept in the forefront. And, then, and, then, and of course, that spilled over to the fact that the voters were very, very distracted. A lot of them stayed home and so forth. It, it became a, just a big old, you know, this is what the Dems do. They keep the water muddy so that no one can think straight, you know. And so I think, you know, for yourself and for any good uh, Republican candidates like yourself, we've got to come around and we've got to coalesce around the values and principles that at least at one time didn't make America great. And I think that's, you know, we just got to pound that up. And that's what Trump demonstrated. I mean, he, he called out the liars and then he gave the positive point, so. No, okay, there's a couple things I want to mention about the race in Alabama. First of all, there were allegations made against Moore that were very, very, serious and, um, I mean, if true, were really, really bad. 
you know, my position, and I and again, I this is something differentiated myself from Dean Heller. Dean called for Roy Moore to step down. Yeah. See, I grew up my whole life listening to national media and many in the local media say things about my father that were completely untrue. I mean, some of the worst things you could say about a basketball coach and destroyed his career. And I know they weren't true, and he did, and I watched him, you know, with my heart bleeding for him, thinking, gosh, he's doing everything he can to fight back, he just doesn't have the bandwidth or the ability to do so. Right. So I said, I don't think we around the country, Dean Heller, Mitch McConnell, other people, should prejudge Roy Moore. First of all, the voters of Alabama should make that determination, and if there's any evidence, a court of law, and that's my position. Let the voters decide. Well, they, they decided. Now, my problem with, with the election is a couple of things. This is because this has happened to me, and, and it'll probably happen again to me, is Mitch McConnell's PAC spent $9 million right. demonizing Roy right. Moore in the primary. Right. So then he beat up bloody. He's like Rocky coming out of round 14, <laughs> coming off the ropes, and they expect him to, to beat Apollo Creed in the first round again. You know, it isn't, and, and that's happened to me. My last race, I had to run against Michael Rover, some majority leader of the state senate. He had every, virtually every elected official in Nevada supporting him. He outspent me four to one. Um, he had all the establishment people behind him, and they created these false, lying, despicable ads, which incidentally his consultant is, is also Heller's consultant, so you'll see the same things. And I still beat him by 8%. And then I lose by 1% in the general election to somebody who didn't have a primary who was fully funded. And they say that I didn't perform. Well, hell, if you didn't make me spend all my money and blood me up in the primary, I would have been going away. So again, what I'm saying is, why doesn't Mitch McConnell stay out of primaries, let the best candidate win, and then you support whoever wins? Other thing I'm gonna say is this. Every race I ran in, when I beat the establishment candidate, they never come out and supported me, not one time. Not one time. Now, now Dan Schwartz did, Barbara Sugarski didn't, so there was like a split in that race. But every other time, they never came out and supported me. So if you don't coalesce the base that you're talking about, how do you expect someone to win? Right. I lost one primary to Sharon Angle, and I supported Sharon Angle. I was the only candidate of the 11 that came out and fully supported her. Because I knew, shit, no matter how disappointed I was to lose, Sharon Angle would have been better than Harry Reid. I mean, I didn't like the fact I wasn't there, but you do what's right. Now, I've already made a promise that if I lose to Dean Heller, I'm gonna support Dean Heller, like I've had. Uh, sure, sure. Now, Dean Heller said the same thing. I hope that he keeps his promise. Huh. Right. <laughs> keep it to me. Yes. Um, you know, what issues in northern Nevada are you going to take to Washington, D.C. To, to be our voice, be our advocate? Well, I'd like to have you tell me which issues are the most important to you here in Washoe compared to other areas. In the rural areas, I've been traveling and meeting with people in those communities, and they've been going over different items with them from uh, the BLM land, the water issues, and, and some of those things. But if you talk about specific things here in Washoe, I'd love to sit down with you. You can tell me what you feel different here than would be in, in Clark County. Oh, love, love, love to hear. I, 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 will, I will tell you, this, the, the, the main things that are out there today is our economy, right? national security, and I think both in Las Vegas and here we, in Washoe, we have similar interests in those regards. Education, um, I, we all, I think, should be concerned about that. And, and, and the fact that uh, the middle class keeps getting, uh, I don't even know, keep, keep getting screwed on all the bills out there, that, that affects the middle class in Clark County as they do here, and, and that needs to stop. Yes? I'm gonna raise one issue you don't hear very much Again, after we're done, if you'd like to sit down or if uh, you want to send me some stuff, I'd love to sit down and listen to you and go through that with you. And I, I think everyone is uh, of the opinion North Korea is one of the most serious issues out there today. Yes, ma'am. You know, there's two different um, um, proposals, and I get them mixed up, so don't hold me to when I say one or the other. I'm just going to tell you the general parts of it. 
First of all, I like the larger tax deduction for each individual. I like the larger tax uh, uh, exemption for the child, the child uh, tax exemption. First of all, having four children, trying to afford and pay for those. These are things that are helping middle class Americans. Things that I don't like, but I understand they're in a, they're, they have certain uh, limitations of what they can do because they can only uh, reduce taxes so much under the reconciliation bill. But why do you take away somebody's medical expense deduction? Why do you take, there's certain ones that are out there that I, I don't understand why that's only hurt middle class Americans that right now don't really have, that don't have uh, uh, someone out there fighting for them. Uh, why do they eliminate or let expire? I know why they did, but they're allowing the individual tax break expire after what is the seven years, but they don't with the corporate ones. They're doing it because they figure after seven years, uh, there won't be enough Democrat legislators to vote against it and it'll continue, but how do we know it's gonna continue? So you don't protect that one, which is the one that really helps middle class Americans more. To me, the simple answer is they have a lot of tax exemptions that have been given to the rich, powerful, and influential. Why aren't we taking those away first and foremost? And I'll give you an example of one of them. I, my understanding is they have not taken this away, is when they allow the, um, uh, the stock for I'm missing, uh, when they allow the, the, the people who sell the stock funds to treat their income as capital gain instead of individual income like everybody else does, even though that's basically their salary. That's a huge tax deduction, I mean, uh, exempt, uh, exclusion for them. Why aren't, we take, why aren't we concentrating and taking away that? And the other one that I think needs to be taken away and you're hearing people fight against it, and they say this is middle class Americans, but it's really not. It's when you allow state income tax to be deducted and even 10,000 limit on your property taxes, that's, a, that's one for states. What basically the large tax states like California, New Jersey, and, and, and uh, New York are getting a tax break. And there's a tax break for them. Who pays that tax break? All of us. So, I mean, I hear these people on Fox News all the time say, it's not right, you know, we pay in more than you pay out. First of all, I would love to see how they calculate that. How do you calculate how much money is being paid from the federal government for your state when, you, when it goes to the military? Doesn't the military defend all 50 states? How do they determine how much of that goes into California and New York? So I'm leery that they pay out more than they get in. But the fact of the matter, it isn't right. Because their state tax is more than another state, we should subsidize that state's taxes. I think that's completely wrong. I said that to one writer, and then he said, well, they, they got, they're gonna get rid of the income tax, state income tax, and I, you mark my words, they're gonna put it back in before it's over. And the second thing is a 10,000 limit on property taxes. Who pays 10,000 a month on property taxes? If you, if it is, would you hold a fundraiser for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. Well, it, it is, but why, why are we subsidizing New Jersey? I don't know, I moved out. That, see, to, 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 me, to me, that would be the things that I would be, to, to answer your questions, get back and fight for the people that have gotten screwed over and over and over again, and that's the middle class American. Donald Trump promised that. Why aren't they doing that in, uh, completely with this tax bill? There are some things in the tax bill, though, that do help, and, I, and, I, and I'm in favor of all those.